Hey guys, hello and welcome again to the one of the most awaited demo sessions. We are here to deep dive into the amazing drone battery swapping stations that houses refuse the drone by the one and only Curtis Larry. Curtis, Curtis is the founder and CEO of Hextronics, a mechanical engineer from Miami. Curtis studied at Georgia Institute of Technology with his passion for robotics product development. He started Hextronics in an, in an early 2020 and has been refining the design of battery exchanging docking stations ever since. Along the way, the Hextronics team has won the engineering capstone design competition at Kurt's alma mater, graduated from the GT Creator X Startup Accelerator, received recognition from the largest, rich, largest tech general in South Florida, Refresh Miami and as and listed as Miami Eno's top under 25, 25 companies. Hi Kurt, thank you, thank you for joining us, us here. Kurt, over to you. Yep. After, without much further ado, I'm here. I'm excited to be part of Nest Gen. Can everyone see and hear me all right? Yes, I yep. think. Yep. Okay, great. Well. I would definitely like to go into expressing my excitement for this uh, for this show. I think that we're really starting a new industry together, especially with Flightbase and the and FlightNow. And and ever since the beginning, it's been great to work with the FlightNow team, um, helping us along the way, and also being able to learn from each other many many um, special things about this industry. And we're just excited for where it will go and where it will take us. So ever since the beginning, we started off with the vision of scalable, reliable, and portable machines, all with the same purpose to launch, control, and schedule automatic drone flights. And in order to do this, we also understood that customers wanted continuous use. So of course, we had to have a rapid refueling station for these vehicles. And in order for it to be, uh, like we said, scalable, portable, and also cost-effective, it should easily integrate with commercial drones in the market and I think we can all understand that the Mavic 2 uh, really, really um, is a critical role in the fundamentals of pursuing drone autonomy with the docking stations that we're all producing um, today. And so from this, we've gotten interest from groups of public safety, law enforcement, who will use it to uh, monitor crowds, survey uh, areas, um, analyze crime scenes, control traffic upon many, many other use cases. Construction as well has extreme interest and use for this as they will deploy these docking stations at sites, uh, moving them from one site to another or just planting one in order to have constant um, surveillance over the site and also constant awareness of what is going on and what is being produced. Agriculture as well, um, livestock and um, and. Uh, as well as crop um, harvesting. Um, many analysis tools are currently available on the market to view the actual video from the drone feed in real time, near real time, or even post-processing in order to get health of the crops, in order to understand how a yield is doing, in order to map the fields, and many other things that truly gives um, farmers an edge on getting the most out of their production. And also we have had extreme interest from the disaster response um, communities across the nation and the world where they really need to be able to do something like deploying a chopper on demand for a search and rescue or for uh, a wildfire or for an avalanche or for a hurricane response or even things such as uh, reporting um, locations uh, in order for the insurance um, to understand what happened before and what happened after a natural disaster. And all of this situational awareness is possible with the Hextronics docking station in the back of a truck. Uh, some people say, why not just fly it uh, yourself from the truck? Well, in many natural disasters, the people that are on the field are the people that are the most valuable at the time. And being able to deploy a chopper, getting a third person perspective from individuals back at base who are, have all of the resources in hand to provide a more conceptual understanding of the, what is happening on the ground they can do it from a third eye perspective, freeing the individuals on the ground to make the decisions and make the actions that's necessary. And with the Hextronics Global Advance, really a portable battery swapping docking station is possible like never before. 
And then it comes to asset inspection, uh, a typical use case where you survey um, systems that are in operation in order to get understanding of their longevity, uh, in order to get an understanding of what maintenance needs to be created on them. Um, even things such as railway, solar, power line, wind turbine, uh, energy, roof, many different areas that need either constant or routine inspection can be completely automated and analyzed simply with having one of the Hextronics docking stations um, planted in this in in the environment. And from our initial launch, uh, kind of last year with Flight Now, uh, if you remember back in the day, it was called the Hextronics One. Um, but ever since then, we've gone to Hextronics Global simply because we've gotten global interest. Um, it's truly amazing the community that is growing around us and and pushing us forward. Um, and we are really open to working with all these groups to make sure that they're successful and to make sure that they can truly get the use out of this product that the industry has been looking for for decades um, and and our ability to provide it at a scalable cost effective and also um, weatherproof and, and very small package just just makes everything work um, work simpler for everyone um, and so let's just go some of you may have seen this but this is kind of the history of hextronics ever since we got the initial interest um, from making a docking station we figured out ways to swap the battery you guys will, will know this this track it's a, it's a hextronics track but so we've learned that definitely prototypes are the easy part um, what really it comes down to is how well your products can ship, how well they can operate in the field reliably, and also how compact and portable they are in transport. Um, and then of course also there's simple things like um, cycle, um, just optimizing the cycle times to make the battery swap process a bit faster. And then we really got into being able to analyze the battery's uh, state of charge and also ensure that we're always uh, working to pick up the correct battery for the system. Also, what we've learned in making all of these systems is how tough the environment is and also how much energy that the wrong sort of equipment can consume. Um, and so what we've really done is had many different cycles of iteration to find out the best, most, um, basically most rugged, reliable, um, compact, and high performance system possible. And this is only possible through uh, rapid iteration design and testing. From this initial launch, we've had many shipments out to all corners of the globe, really understanding how to make it work together. And so from this, we've come to the main product, the Hextronics Global Advanced. It's really going to be the system that unlocks drone autonomy for many industries. It's going to be the system that is the most well-tested, most well-supported and high performance system that uh, currently exists. Um, as you can see, we built it in mind for longevity and reliability in the outdoors. Um, and this is for the industry leaders to take their next step towards autonomy. Um, really, this is this is the docking station that is kickstarting this industry, and it has taken much pain from our teams here, pain in learning and pain in growth, um, in order to bring this system to you all today. And we 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 literally we don't sleep to make this happen for you all. Um, and so. We really need to go into kind of the specifications of what we've created and so we've we've designed it for wide operation and temperature um, and this is something that is extremely crucial and critical in all of these systems because when it's outside in different seasons and environments the sun is unforgiving and the cold is cold um, so we've really put in uh, the state a state-of-the-art compressor system which we'll talk about later and also an internal heating system that ensures that all components um, do not really go below freezing, which could damage, damage the, uh, the battery packs themselves. Um, and then we've gone into making it rain and dust proof. Uh, we have systems already that have been sitting outside for four months and they still boot up even in the heat of 
the Miami Heat or in um, in or in, in environments where it rains um, nearly three times a week. Um, and then upon our iteration cycles, we've now been able to um, to decrease the weight. Uh, so now it's just under it's under 100 pounds, um, which in order to do all of this in one package and have the cooling necessary, um, it's really one of the most compact systems that's even possible. Um, and then we stuck to our anodized aluminum body um, just because it is the, the best to work with. It's, it's relatively lightweight and it can sustain the environments um, very well. Um, and then our swap time, of course, um, gets quicker and quicker every day um, through these little updates, quicker and more reliable. Um, we're always looking for ways to improve it. Um, however, it's, it's, it's sitting really good at, at more than, at less than 90 seconds swap time. And we've clocked over 10,000 swaps on a single unit, um, without any degradation of the part or lifetime. And so furthermore, we'll just go into it from another angle. Um, once again, we will touch on the compact and efficient cooling system. And then also we're, we have the capability to integrate cellular and GPS capability directly within the unit. Um, this is powerful for our truck mounted systems where this docking station can move at any given um, at any given time. And also we have a, a, a micro hard bullet plus router, probably one of the most fastest um, 4G LTE modems on the market. Um, the system is also designed for when uh, 5G routers become um, easier to obtain and also um, the 5G spectrum becomes more widespread. Um, it'll be able to integrate very easily um, just by a couple of nuts and bolts. Um, and then within the system, we do have capability to charge six batteries, relatively standard. They all charge simultaneously, um, and uh, it's about uh, 90 to 110 minutes to charge one battery. Um, what we've also designed really and put a lot of detail and, and intensive work with the FlightNow team. Um, is the landing pad, the self-centering landing pad, and the back door that ensures that any orientation that the drone lands, it's able to take off again and also be centered inside of the station. Um, it's it's really a, a complex problem when when you try to funnel everything mechanically, but the, we've been able to successfully do this with countless numbers of successful precision landings with the team. Um, Thanks to thanks to DRAJ and the Precision Landing guys, um, we're really able to make a reliable um, system that comes back and lands every time, and um, it's it's only going to get better. Um, and so, from also inside, we'll touch on the built-in backup battery. We found that this helps a lot because it builds up a large level of capacitance, which prevents um, many of the internal systems from going offline ever if there's a sudden jolt. And it also enables the system to stay alive, even if there's a power outage to the entire grid. Um, it can sustain up to two hours of, of continuous life after unplugged, which is enough for the drone to return back home. And on top of all this, uh, what was one of the first things that we received from customers was saying, this is great and everything, but can we put it on our truck? <laughs> and first, First and foremost, we were we were a little confused about this, but then we understood it's probably the best way to um, portably deploy one of these systems is just having it in the back of a standard truck. So we've developed Hex Truck. It is a, a standard shock resistance mount, mounting kit um, that integrates within practically any truck bed. Um, yeah, practically any truck bed, and actually most um, most ATV, ATV or mule beds as well. Um, and really all it requires is an external, um, an external inverter that draws power from the alternator of the vehicle. Um, and with a hex truck, um, you need the cellular package so that you could really uh, receive and, and transmit signals from anywhere. Um, with this also, it generates a Wi-Fi hotspot. So if you have one in, in your truck, you'd be able to, um, to tap into its Wi-Fi and really um, carry out any of your operations that you need. Um, and let's keep going. So what we want to talk to at, at, at Hextronics, we have a saying um, that we're entering the drone industry with whole enchilada mindset. <clears throat> and it's kind of a, a, a Miami type of, of thing um, just because of the culture down here. But it's also the main principle of thinking about everything, the whole enchilada. And when it comes into everything, you got to be thinking about not only just can the docking station swap 
it's much more than swapping. Um, it we we swapped over a, a year ago, you know. Um, and really, what we've had to learn since then is how to make it for production, how to make it for extreme climate control, how to make it so that the batteries um, really charge and have a good life cycle, um, how to make it so the network communication and so the whole um, automation um, framework actually works and integrates perfectly. Um, and a host of many other issues that also comes along with just being able to integrate with um, traffic control systems or being able to plug into uh, weather service providers and really make the definitions of is it okay to fly or not right now. And this is really going to be kind of the last 90% of drone um, industry automation is, okay, great, the station swaps and the drone can fly, but what's prevent, what, like, should it fly or should it fly in this region? Or if it can fly, how can we make it fly safely so that beyond visual line of sight is not a blockade anymore, but really it's kind of just everything that we need to have approved and checked off before we can understand that, yeah, it's okay, we can have an autonomous flying drone. It's quite insane that um, humanity has has come to this, but it, it's actually amazing. And I don't see this as much of a, of a blockade, but more of just the next challenge that we've got to solve um, together. And from this, okay, I told you we'd touch back on this. This is our state-of-the-art um, HVAC cooling system. This is actually the smallest comp commercial compressor available. Um, and it really goes to show that in order to get something like 400 watts of cooling, which is necessary when you're placed in some tough environments, even over 90, um, 90 degrees outside in the hot sun, you're going to get to temperatures that don't make lithium ion batteries happy. Um, and so for this, you need an HVAC cooling system. Um, I can't stress this enough, but it's also something that is relatively complicated, but we have figured out here um, at Hextronics. It's really a fundamental thing. We call it, uh, internally, we call it the HexVac, um, but that's just, it's just another step in the, in the puzzle of full autonomy. And so now we'll go into it. I said prototypes were, were the easy thing. We got the battery swapping a year ago. Um, but what's difficult is bringing a new product like this into production. Um, it is pretty hard um, because any step of the way, if there's one flaw, the whole system collapses. So we've detailed our whole production process and we followed through with some of the best, um, the best production team here in Miami and in, even in the world. I'm extremely proud of these guys. And I think that that they're really going to be the ones that make it happen um, because you can spend all the time building them at 2 a.m. in your garage, but it really only gets realized when you're able to build a family that can put this stuff um, together for the world. Um, and that's exactly what we've we've built here. We're doing it. All right. We've got we've got about four to five thousand square feet. Uh, we're being able to produce these things at 20 to 30 a month right now, but we're aiming for uh, to break 50 um, pretty soon. Um, DHL is some of our best friends there, um, and we've really got our production um, and, and testing sequence um, nailed down. And it's only going to get better, and it only gets better from the feedback of our customers. Um, and that's really what's going to help push us forward in the drone industry, what's going to help us build the best products for you all, um, for, the, for the service providers and for the users and really for the people that get benefit, um, we we need your your support um, and we need your input um, because right now uh, we're able to do it. And if if you want to keep um, kind of going going into research and development for other stations, or you want to kind of fuel your own system, great. Um, but for the groups that want to start being on the forefront of um, drone automation technology and for the groups that want to start implementing drone autonomy as soon as possible, um, we figured it out and we are the ones that are going to be bringing this industry forward. And if you want to work with us, um, our inbox is wide open and we're just trying to make sure that all of our agreements work with all of the groups that we work with together. Um, so that we can all grow in this industry and so that we can all take advantage of the technology that we've 
been able to design, invent, and produce. Um, and this is Hextronics. And of course, there's something bigger coming um, on the horizon that we'll talk about um, on March 30th. And so we'll direct you all there. And if you come see our website, I'm sure you'll figure out um, that, that we don't just work on one product, um, even though we figured one out, there's always more to come. Right. So I would just say uh, while you were speaking, right, I can see a lot of customers uh, in the chat section, in the Q&A section. And uh, I'll be just taking all those quick Q&As one by one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can we, should we start? Sure. Okay. okay all right. Great. So, yeah. You yeah. Got it. So, yeah, I'll just, I'll just uh, go one by one and now uh, you'll be taking all the ones. Okay. So, right. One second. Right. So there is a question or uh, one question. Uh, so do you have a system that are based around uh, non DJ drones? So basically a HP. I mean, basically a yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're working on, on, on some, some special projects, but uh, right now, um, DJI drones is, are the ones that are pretty much the most um, scalable and the ones that we found the, the, the best to develop with and develop for. Um, and working with the, uh, with the Flight Now team, um, really we found um, great reliability with the Mavic 2. And of course, with the whole enchilada and with the whole principle of drone autonomy, um, if the fundamental drone is, is reliable, that's how we can build a system around it. Um, many, many drones in, in the field now that we're working with um, are, are just peaking that level of reliability. And the Mavic 2 was kind of the first for us to crack the code. Right. Yeah. Okay. Moving towards the next question, which says, so it comes to a um, question where he's asking, um, can we configure uh, the HXT with a, on a private cloud or a private mesh network and operate it in, inside a facility? So. Uh, private mesh network. So um, really the, the system itself uh, has two internet options, two network options. Uh, it can be Ethernet directly plugged in, or it can be um, it, it can be also through cellular. Um, if you are building your own private mesh network, um, that could be through Ethernet or even through a, a different signal band. Um, what you can do is simply have your own signal um, signal modem or router um, plugging Ethernet into the unit, um, and then if you want to have it private completely, so that um, there is no um, exchange with the external internet, even with the drone video feeds. Um, this is something that um, we would have to work together with um, FlightNow um, in order to um, kind of push out the the off network or the, or the private um, server version um, that does not require authentication with the um, main FlightNow server um, at all times. But yes, it's completely possible. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, so coming um, coming to the similar kind of questions, where uh, so is the system uh, possible to in, is, is the system is possible to integrate with the inside, which is a four G cellular connection, and mm -hmm. can they be operations and can can they be used in operations and all? With outside, I'm sure we've been working uh, we've been looking at this um, for a while. Um, Really, it can work with any um, 4G modem. Um, the fact for it to be integrated within the unit, um, just simply the uh, modem hardware has to have, um, or the router hardware has to have um, simple um, SMA type connections and that can mount directly within the unit. Uh, we supply something like 12 volts to it. Um, and then it just needs to be able to provide um, Ethernet for the other internal systems to consume. Um, so yes, LSI can definitely be integrated as well. Um, we've just um, we, we're still looking at um, many other providers, and we have a slot right in the unit that's pretty um, simple to configure um, with a system that you you would need. Mm -hmm. So Kurt, uh, but which means we can configure our own. Private modems, right? There is a space to configure our own modems, right? Yes, the exactly. There's a space right there. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. 
So coming to the next question. So well, uh, the new stations will be working with DJ M6 and Wes. You'll have to tune in on, on March 30th. <laughs> right. Sure. Okay. So the upcoming question is how many amps of the electricity electricity are required basically in order to put a solar pa size of solar panel for the remote placements to provide the electricity to the box? Sure. So the, the station itself now uses um, less than 600 watts. Um, and so this can be powered by 120 or 240 um, circuitry. Um, mm -hmm. And so if you're if you're developing your solar panel grid, um, typically they're either on 12 or 24 volt circuits um, for solar. Um, and so really you would need about um, 600 watts of, of solar power and you'll you'll you, you'll probably need a couple um, probably I'd say, I don't know, um, 10 kilowatts of, um, 10 kilowatt hours of backup battery power just to be safe. Um, and then also an inverter, um, with, with you as well. Um, and so if you're developing that package and would like, um, some more, um, communication regarding this, um, please let us know and, uh, send us an email and, and, and we'll work to really give some more specifications about, um, kind of our internal included backup battery and then also the power consumption of our cooling system, which is um, which is the most most efficient uh, cooling system on the market today. Mm -hmm. So right, coming up to the next questions, can the HXT box host two drones right now? Like the Hextronic station? Um, yeah. <clears throat> so our, our principle is because this industry is kind of just getting getting started. Our principles keep it simple with um, one drone, one box. So you can you can easily have two drones if you have two boxes um, and they'd be able to replace themselves in the air. Um, however, yes, we, we, we will we'll stick to one for now um, in, in the unit. Um, it just it just makes the um, the principle of um, reliability um, and and the principle of simplicity much easier um, than if you want to have two in a system um, and coordinating that effort. It's it's easier to start with one than it is to start with two. Right. Okay. So there is one more question coming to the, like coming around the connection again. electronic. So the, about the customs first, custom drone, let's say if uh, Phil, there, I mean, like you have already answered, there'll be a chance you can put a, a non-custom drones also, right? On to the Hextronics, right? I mean, so there is a one uh, question regarding the clarification. Let's say if they well, don't want to use a, uh, a DJI drone or I would say in a Chinese company drone, will there be a chance to host a custom drone which is based on the Pixar or something else? If it has a similar frame, um, yeah. then I'm sure it's, it's something that, that could integrate well, but I mean, the process of battery swapping, it's very, um, mechanical, um, in, in nature and uh, requires a certain, um, reliability in the battery latching mechanism. Um, and if it's going for a custom drone, um, we simply would need, um, to come together and decide kind of the minimum, um, order required for a system like this for our, our team to take on the research and development efforts to modify our system or work collaboratively to develop um, your your drone to interface with our system as easily as possible. Right. So basically, we have to work with the DJ. I mean, the battery is similar to how DJ works and all those kind of R&Ds will be required to do the same. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so I think like there are many more questions. So I think there is a general question regarding the weatherproofing of the drone itself and during the flight. Uh, I mean, light weather, how would the drone will react and the box will react? Are there mm -hmm. any fail safe and belt and all those? Mm -hmm. Sure. So with um, what we do is we ping um, a few weather service providers um, to get the um, the predicted and the current uh, weather condition of the station. 
um, mm -hmm. and we're working to make a basically not fly or no fly um, um, kind of a flyer no fly distinction on the environment so that um, so that the drone does not uh, run into a rainstorm. Um, typically a, a light drizzle, it's okay to return home. Um, and then there are also ways to weatherproof the drone body itself um, with kind of a, a drone wetsuit. Um, we've seen these in, in the market and definitely there's interest behind it. Um, however, the method of actually um, taking out the battery um, when the wetsuit is on um, it's a little bit more difficult just because of the, the air um, kind of vacuum that needs to be created. Um, and so mm -hmm. right now we recommend um, to check uh, that the weather is good before flight um, because also, I mean, if it is raining, there's high chance of high winds and also high chance mm -hmm. of low visibility. Um, and so it's, that would be at a time when you typically would not be flying a drone anyways. Mm -hmm. um, and so, Right now, for this for this product to get into the into the field without any large blockades, um, we just will have um, simple prevention of an, any 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 um, any harsh weather that we would operate in. We'll start with um, pretty much sunny or just a cloudy day, and go from there. Great, thank you for that. So uh, there is one more question, like regarding uh, the I mean the hardware integration of the box. So. Uh, so if there is any problem, like let's say in the debris collecting in the launch tray, would there be any upgrades coming to the system? How can we avoid, how are we going to avoid those? Let's say there are any debris. In the system. So if you see in the, in, in the presentation, we have now um, mm -hmm. kind of more, um, more open areas in the, the launch tray mm -hmm. to kind of allow any, any debris to simply fall through. Um, and, and it's, 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 not been a problem um i mean we haven't like dropped any heavy levels of debris inside of the system while it's open mm -hmm. and it is de designed to be open for kind of the minimum amount of time that's just for drone takeoff and drone landing um and so right now we have not encountered any any problems with debris um becoming um, stuck in the tray simply because we have now a, a tray with with holes in it um, and now we also do not keep the tray open for extended periods of time okay right so with like uh, continuing with that will there be any plan for uh, putting a heating elements for snow as well while we are scaling everything so so right now we already have over 100 watts of heating within the system um, there are some use instances where having a heating pad on the landing pad itself um, could be beneficial um, to basically warding off snow and also keeping the system cold even after a large snowstorm. Um, and then also there's the principle of snow buildup on the front, which can be avoided simply by having the unit placed on a post rather than directly on the floor. Um, and so, yes, um, we're, we're, we're developing the, the heating pad that goes on the roof of the system. Um, however, right now we do have heating elements within the system that already are capable of um, basically um, melting off minor um, snow particles. But, uh, I mean, yeah. probably two inches of snow would take, um, would take uh, about roughly six hours to... Um, be melted off the station currently. Um, and so, of course, we're working to optimize this and we're looking for partners in the, in the field because right now we are in, in Miami. We're definitely looking for partners in the field to help test some of these initial designs for um, integrated heating on the roof of the system. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Bert. So, I mean, since we are moving ahead of time, I should just take one more question. So what's the current battery swap failure rate? Uh, like right now in the system, are there any? Sure. So the the failure rate is less than point. It's po less than point zero zero one percent. As we've had ten thousand concurrent without issues. Yeah. Um, it comes down to the initial calibration of the station, which we do calibrate all of our systems um, before mm -hmm. leaving the door. Um, so there should not be a battery sw swap failure. 
um, mm -hmm. unless if the system um, either becomes manually miscalibrated or if it is um, kind of um, like dropped off your truck. Please don't drop the unit. Um, but it, it should remain nice. calibrated. And there are a couple minor details that we have included within the actual firmware of the system that does some very intricate things uh, with the stepper motors themselves in order to um, increase the reliability of the battery swap uh, mechanisms. Right. Thank you so much, Kurt, for answering all those questions. So uh, audiences, like if you have any other questions, you can visit Extronics Boots. Uh, right uh, by going into the reception and just by selecting the expo and by clicking on the register button and uh, they will receive an email regarding the same and all those questions can be discussed again. Uh, right. Uh, apart from that, uh, like before closing, thank you. Uh, Kurt, do you have any closing thoughts for the session? Mm -hmm. mm, no. Well, just the thought of um, excited to be in this uh, with you all together and of course any mm -hmm. feedback, questions or or comments or suggestions are always appreciated. Um, yeah. And we're just going to work to continue um, building these, these systems um, to be used um, globally um, as it's, it's what uh, now we've, we've eliminated many of the blockades that have been preventing drone autonomy um, from really taking flight. Right. Thank you so much Kurt, for joining the session and I think you just gave us a quite amazing hint for coming upcoming M300 box. We'd love to see it, see it in action. So I think mm -hmm. the other audiences are also waiting for the same. And uh, you can reach out to Kurt and we have already dropped the contacts in the chat section. So as you can see those over there and regarding this, um, I mean, the rest is you can just jump, go to the booth and like I already explained and uh, after this, uh, we, we also have three upcoming sessions in the next five minutes. Please visit the receptions for the sessions to have to learn more about the upcoming session. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. It was nice yep. to have you over. Of course. Thank you, audience. Thank you, Thank you all. Bye. Bye.